In the last video, we created two clades that we called Echinomorpha and Polymorpha. However, these two groups are not the only clades on this planet, nor were they the first. When multicellular life first evolved on our speculative planet, it began as simple, mostly immobile life forms. The vast majority of creatures simply passively fed on plankton and marine snow, and were rooted to the seafloor or drifting aimlessly among the currents. But among them lived simple, yet mobile, herbivores and scavengers, which would eventually evolve into some of the first active predators of this planet. These more active lifeforms began to outcompete and extinct their immobile rivals, leading to an arms race of increasing biodiversity. These creatures had simple body plans, resembling worms or curvets of tissue. One of these, a radially symmetrical clade, that eventually evolved a bilateral body plan, was the ancestor of Echinomorpha. A segmented, worm-like lifeform eventually evolved into Polymorpha. However, there were several groups that evolved into clades we have not yet discussed. Colostoma, meaning stalk mouth, is a clade characterized by a stalk or trunk for feeding. They have a ring of muscle tissue surrounding their body which serves as a foot, and most feed by sifting through the sand, although some species have adapted to filter feed. These creatures were inspired by gastropods, the taxonomic class of invertebrates that include snails and slugs, which are part of the phylum Mollusca. Similarly to them, Calistoma has no bones, although some species have developed shells due to the rising threat of predation. They have a simple heart and green-tinted blood, and some larger species have a gill surface along the top of their foot. Colistoma is an important prey species to predators such as Echinomorpha. Before we continue, I'd like to remind you to consider subscribing. It's free, and you can always change your mind. I hope you enjoy the video, and have a great day. Venari Sfera is a clade of free-floating filter feeders that drift throughout the ocean currents. They have a spherical body, with prey-capturing tentacles and four vertical rows of cilia, or vibrating hairs, for movement. Venari Sfera has a ring of photoreceptive cell patches that function as eyes. They have a one-way gut, meaning food is consumed and extruded from the same opening. This isn't a major problem for the early, slow-moving species, but may become more of an issue if this clade ever evolves to fill active predator niches. Anguelia is a worm-like creature that finds its food by burrowing through the seabed, and thus, they're in direct competition with Polymorpha. If two species are equally good at filling the same niche, then one of the species is very likely to be outcompeted and go extinct. So these clades have begun a process known as niche partitioning. This process involves finding niches that will not be in direct competition, perhaps by one species becoming nocturnal while another is active during the day. In this case, polymorpha are usually larger than two and a half centimeters, or about one inch, while the less complex Inguelia have many smaller species, including many microscopic representatives. Some do grow larger, often capable of swimming, including several that can grow up to several feet in length. However, most of these species may go extinct after Polymorpha develops more active predators among its clade. Asymmetria is the most distantly related of the animals on its planet in relation to the clades we have discussed so far. It is essentially a collection of branching tubes surrounded by an elastic muscle capable of expanding through the intake of water. These expansions allow for fast movements, with some asymmetria able to grab swimming creatures from the water. They are also capable of absorbing minerals from the seabed or water column, allowing for some species to construct bony tubes or shells for defense. Asymmetria are resourceful generalists, which may take on some interesting new forms when introduced to new contexts. There are several other groups on our speculative planet that have not been discussed due to a lack of relevance to this project. These clades may be mentioned in the future, but for now shall not be playing any major roles. Anyway, thanks for watching. In the next episode, we shall be discussing the planet on which this project is taking place.